Hello YouTubers. Uh, I know some of you have been requesting a video, sometimes even demanding a video of this Apple II GS that you have seen in my other videos, in particular the video toaster demonstration video where I set up one of the cameras to point at this machine. Um, I purchased this machine back in September of 1998. Uh, growing up, I always owned an Apple II. Uh, we had an Apple IIc in the household up until about 1993 when we got a finally replaced it with a PC. Um, a friend of mine had showed me what the 2GS could do way back in 1996, and I wasn't really aware of what the machine could do above and beyond a regular 8-bit Apple II. Because, quite honestly, I had never actually used any Apple II GS software on any of these machines when I was in middle school and elementary school. Uh, believe it or not, this was my third ever eBay purchase. Um, it's a pretty tricked out setup. Uh, I've upgraded it over the years with hardware that I found up for sale on Usenet groups and believe it or not, Delphi groups. Uh, I, th I think they're still online, but I don't think they're as popular as they used to be. But uh, let's take a look inside and see what type of hardware powers this Apple II GS. Alright, uh, this is just going to be a quick overview of what I have in this machine currently. Uh, I have other hardware for this machine stored away that I'll eventually show in another YouTube video. But uh, let's start off slot by slot. In slot number one, we have a fairly basic Grappler Plus parallel card for parallel printing. That's what this ribbon cable here is here with the Centronics connector on the end of it. Uh, slot two with this ribbon connector is an Applied Engineering Audio Animator Sound Card. And that connects down here to the uh, Insonic external output connector or whatever the heck it's called and this was one of the nicer sound cards for the 2GS as you can see it has this nice little breakout box here with the headphone and microphone input on top you can control each level individually in the back we have MIDI input and output along with line level RCA jacks for input and output as well this card was nice because, unlike other sound cards, the actual digitizer for the recording was inside this shielded metal box, so it was an exceptionally clean recording card. It could also record audio in stereo, which the Insonic dock chip could not do normally. Moving on to slot 3, you can see it's a fairly large card. That's a Transwarp GS with a original Applied Engineering 32K cache card on it. It also has an upgraded CPU cable going down to the motherboard there. Uh, once upon a time there was an individual by the name of Bill Schuff who would custom build those cables and unlike the original cable it has uh, high quality gold contacts which greatly improved the reliability of this machine because it used to be pretty flaky before that. Uh, slots 4 and 5 are empty. I'm actually using the built-in mouse firmware and the smart port firmware to power the three and a half inch drives. In slot 6 I have a RamFast Revision D SCSI card which powers this Apple CDSC Plus CD-ROM drive and an Apple 40 SC 40 megabyte external hard drive. I've also used it to connect devices like zip drives and magneto optical drives. In slot 7, by far the newest piece of Apple II hardware I own is a CFFA 3000 card, which I use to connect to USB storage devices which makes life a lot easier bringing data to and from this machine like the olden days 
And finally, I have a Applied Engineering GS RAM Plus card, fully populated with 6 megabytes of RAM, bringing up this machine to 6.25 megabytes of RAM total when you include the motherboard RAM. And I also have a System Saver 2GS if you didn't see it before. So uh, let's power up and see what we got. Okay, now that we got the cover back on, let's fire up the machine. Gotta wait a couple seconds for the old hard drive to spin up. The Apple Talk errors are because I don't have Apple Talk enabled. The first two drives are hooked up to the SCSI card and the other drives that are loading up slowly are on the CFFA 3000 card via the USB stick I showed earlier. For those wondering why I have Apple Talk installed, I have a Shiva FastPath 5 down here that allows me to connect this computer to an Ethernet network via the onboard local talk connection. And allows me to share files and connect to the internet using the uh, Marinetti TCP IP stack. Um, most of you have already seen GSOS, so I won't go into much detail. But uh, as you can see, we're running at 12 megahertz. We have the aforementioned TCP IP stack shows up on here which is currently not enabled because I don't have Apple Talk enabled and that's one of the trade-offs with this machine unfortunately I cannot have Apple Talk enabled along with the CFFA 3000 it's not that big of a deal though since I have another storage device available and I just have a couple of add-ons that I find useful on here um, if you haven't picked it up yet if you're a 2GS user this file manager desk accessory is very handy when you're in other applications. It allows you to do basic file management without having to return the finder. And I also recommend ShadowWrite, which is actually a full-blown text editor. It allows you to quickly edit text files in Finder or any other application. So I suppose you want to see something. So. This extras menu here shows up when you have various uh, extras installed. Um, both of these here are included with GSOS to make the alias in the quick launch list. I don't have any third party extras installed there. And under the classic desk accessory menu, it's mostly hardware related stuff like the Transcorp GS control panel. Uh, dock view, which is actually a neat little app that I'll show you later. It shows you the status of the onboard and sonic synthesizer, and of course the CFFA 3000 configuration. So let's see what dock view can do. So we'll just load up, ah, we'll load up SynthLab. So, 
So that's just a little demonstration of uh, some of the sound capabilities of the Apple II GS and some of the applications that I have installed. Unfortunately, I really don't have anything interesting on this machine right now. Um, most of the more interesting software I have are Apple II GS demos, which require booting off of a three and a half inch floppy drive directly since they directly access the hardware of the machine. They are unfortunately not compatible with the CFFA 3000. So, well, we do have a couple games, like my personal favorite, One Arm Battle. And that's just about it for my Apple II GS. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and feel free to leave a comment. Yeah, that 25 year old hard drive doesn't sound too good, but hey, it still works.